In the first two seminars, we covered recognition and insight. You began learning how to recognize where you are in the moment, including unwanted or uncomfortable internal experiences, and reactions to them without judging yourself. Last time, we introduced the idea of insight, or what those experiences might say about what is important to us. We've touched on how attempts to avoid or change internal experiences don't always work, and how those control attempts can actually make experiences worse or create new problems for us. Remember the tug of war and finger trap metaphors? We've introduced the practice of being more reflective upon our in the moment experiences. Now, in our last seminar, we'll turn our attention towards openness to change in a more fulfilling life. This means asking the question, in a world where you could choose to have your life be about something, what would you choose? We are going to work with the internal experiences with which you struggle. In this exercise, you will be asked to actively and openly invite into your awareness your unwanted experiences so that you may approach them with acceptance and compassion, so that you are open to receiving the information communicated to you through your painful experience. Like the others, this exercise encourages you to make space for your struggle rather than fighting it. And remember, if it ever feels like too much, feel free to stop doing the exercise. Go ahead and get into a comfortable position where you are sitting or resting. If you are sitting and able, sit upright in a grounded and stable posture, your arms and legs resting comfortably, and your hands resting in your lap or on your legs, whichever is most comfortable for you. Allow your eyes to gently close or softly gaze at an object a few feet from you. Allow yourself to arrive. Take a few moments to get in touch with the physical sensations in your body, especially the sensations of touch or pressure where your body makes contact with the surface upon which you are resting. Become aware of what you are noticing as you sit here, being aware of this moment. Gather yourself by noticing the gentle rise and fall of your breath in your chest and belly. Not needing to control your breath in any way. Simply let yourself breathe naturally. Allow whatever it is you're aware of to just be without needing it to be other than what it is as you find it in this very moment. Expand your awareness to take in your body as a whole. Any signs of tension and any signs of calm relaxation. Just take note of what there is to observe and notice being aware that there is actually a part of you noticing what you're noticing. Now, bring your mind's attention to the struggle with the uncomfortable internal experiences that brought you to CAPS. Allowing the internal experiences to emerge into your awareness. Allow space for the discomfort, for the pain. Allow yourself to be present with that experience.
Bring to mind the tug of war exercise. Notice any doubts, fears, worries, or resistance you might be having about allowing uncomfortable feelings to be present. Bring those experiences to your awareness with a sense of curiosity and compassion. Just notice them. Acknowledge their presence as a curious scientist might acknowledge the presence of the information that comes from observing his or her experiment. Just notice the experiences without working on them, believing them, or trying to get rid of them. As you remain in the presence of your struggle, ask yourself, what has it been like for me to struggle with this experience? What have I done to control or get rid of this experience? Have my attempts to control my experience caused more distress or problems? What have I given up or put off in the service of trying to reduce or control my pain? In my struggle to get rid of or reduce or control my unwanted experience or pain, what have I given up in my life that is valuable to me? Allow yourself to gently open up to your painful experience, to your struggles that have been in the service of trying to make the pain go away, and the struggling that has resulted from not living your life. Bring a sense of compassion to any sensations of discomfort that might be showing up. simply being a witness to whatever comes up. Recognize what you observe without judgment. Ask yourself, can I make room for the discomfort and for the pain? Think about the tug of war exercise and ask, can I drop the struggle of trying to make the pain go away? Can I turn myself toward that which gives my life value, meaning, and purpose? Is this something with which I must struggle? Or can I, like the finger trap exercise, openly lean into the discomfort in the service of not being trapped by my thoughts and feelings and living my life more fully? Now. Allow the discomfort to recede a bit from your attention. Not necessarily trying to push it away, but not keeping it in the forefront of your attention either. Just begin to let it fade into the background of your awareness on its own accord. Return your attention to your breathing. Slowly breathe in and slowly breathe out. Attending to the rhythm of your breath, the coolness of the air as you breathe in, and the warmth of the air as you breathe out. Now, as we get ready to end this exercise, begin to gradually widen your attention to take in the sounds around you, both inside the room and out. Bring yourself back to the room in which you are sitting. Take a moment to intentionally bring this sense of self-acceptance into the present moment. 
When you are ready, take a deep breath and slowly open your eyes. Take a moment to reflect on this experience. Jot down your reactions on page 17 of your workbook. You may even begin to fill in the worksheet Acceptance of Pain and Struggling on page 18 in your workbook. Please hit pause on this recording until you have finished journaling and are ready to continue. Now let's focus on openness. Something important to remember is being open does not mean allowing others to abuse us or give up wanting to improve situations, events, or behaviors that are readily changeable. It means accepting yourself and your internal experience as it is now and allowing yourself space to move forward. Let's take a moment to look at using two strategies for helping ourselves. One is change and another is openness. Change is an excellent strategy for when we need to address something outside of ourselves, something that is not us. Openness is an excellent strategy when we are experiencing unwanted or uncomfortable things, thoughts, feelings, or sensations inside ourselves. Some changes we are capable of making are often more difficult because they require us to use both change and openness to experience actual change. For example, if we are anxious or around people and we value relationships and a sense of belonging, we might need to be open to the feeling of anxious and anxiety in order to be around people. Being open means completely accepting in the moment without fighting or judgment whatever internal experiences show up, all in the service of doing what is important to us. <coughs> It means being committed to a course of action, even when we experience discomfort, because that action is what is valuable to us. Sometimes it's hard to commit to an action because we don't really know what is important to us. Let us take a look at this. We can begin having the conversation about that which gives our life value, meaning, and purpose. These are our values. Values are not so much about the future as they are about living in the moment and doing the things that embody our personal vision. So if you had a magic wand and could make all of your discomfort disappear, what would be different? How would you act or be different? What would change in your life? Take a moment to jot down your responses to this question on page 17 in your workbook. Please press pause until you are ready to continue. Let's talk about this using another metaphor. Essentially, this is like heading west. Let's say heading west is a choice you make. It's something you value. You pick up your GPS and start heading west from your home or wherever you are located at this point. Imagine that you head west around the entire world and find yourself back where you started. Have you arrived at west or can you still continue to head west? Values are kind of like heading west. They are a series of multiple journeys. You can always keep heading west. Imagine that having a loving, caring, respect, respectful relationship is your heading west, your personal value. Will you ever get there, or can you always engage in behaviors that move you in that direction? Keep in mind that there are landmarks to let you know that you are heading in your chosen direction. These landmarks are important because they help to motivate us to let us know we are on the preferred course. What would be some examples of landmarks that you are heading in the value direction if your value is to, to have a loving, caring, respectful relationship? What are your own landmarks for your own personal values?
turn to pages 19 and 20 in your workbook and find the Values Compass Worksheet. This is a tool you can use to really begin to refine your values and how important each one of them might be to you. On page 19, you'll see some questions that will help you think through your values. You can use page 20 to write them down. As you complete this worksheet, you may find that some of the values aren't applicable to your life or aren't very important, and that's okay. You are the person that gets to decide what is and what isn't important to you. Take a moment to fill out the worksheet and take some time to look at this as you continue working towards living your life more fully. Hit pause until you are ready to continue. Now turn to page 21 of your workbook. Consider these questions as you think about your values. Feel free to refer back to pages 19 and 20 of your workbook if that would be helpful. Take some time to think about and write down your responses. If you continue to avoid your unpleasant internal experiences, how long are you willing to wait to live your life? If you're waiting for the unpleasant internal experiences to go away, how much are you giving up in the meantime? What do you think would happen if, instead of waiting for an unwanted internal experience to go away before you started living your life to the fullest, you just started living your life and openly accepting your experiences? And that concludes the Rio program. I hope that you make a commitment to continue practicing the skills of recognition, insight, and openness. Take some time to use the resources in your workbook to practice. Don't forget about all the resources and helpful tools listed in the appendix on page 23 of your workbook. Remember that you can listen to Rio again if you want more opportunities to continue practicing these exercises and skills, or Contact CAPS if you're interested in joining or enrolling in one of our process groups.